the Greek gods, Poseidon. After Kronos was deposed, the three sons threw dice for his empire. Zeus, the youngest, won and chose the sky. Poseidon smiled to himself because the sky was empty, and he knew that the impulse of Zeus had chosen it because it looked so high. And now he, Poseidon, could choose as he would have done if he had won. He chose the sea. He had always wanted it. It is the best place for adventures and secrets and makes claim on land and sky. Hades, who was always unlucky, had to take the underworld. The earth was held as a commonwealth and left to the goddesses to manage. Poseidon left Olympus and came to his kingdom. He immediately set about building a huge underwater palace with a great pearl and coral throne. He needed a queen and chose Thethetis, a beautiful nereid or water nymph, but it was prophesied that any son born to Thetis would be greater than his father, so Poseidon decided to try elsewhere. The prophecy came true. The, thun, the son of Thetis was Achilles, who undoubtedly was greater than his father, Pele, Peleus. Poseidon chose another nereid named Aphrodite, but like his brother Zeus, he was a great traveler and had hundreds of children in different places. He was a very difficult god, changeful and quarrelsome, and although he did not bear grudges, he could be pleased, and then his smile was radiant. He liked jokes and thought up very curious forms for his creatures. He liked to startle nymphs with monsters and concorded the octopus, the squid, the sea polypid or jellyfish, the swordfish, the blowfish, the sea cow, and many others. And once trying to appease Aphrodite's jealous rage, he thought up the dolphin and gave it to her as a gift. He was greedy and aggressive, always trying to add to his kingdom. Once he claimed Attica as his own and stabbed his trident into the hillside where the Acropolis still stands and a spring of salt water spouted. Now the people of Athens did not want to belong to the kingdom of the sea. They were afraid of Poseidon, who had a habit of seizing all the youth of the town when he was in the mood. So they prayed to be put up under the protection of another god. Athene heard their prayers and she came down and planted an olive tree by the side of the spring. Poseidon was enraged. His face darkened and he roared with fury, raising a storm. A fishing fleet was blown off the sea and never came to port. He challenged Athene to single combat and threatened to stir up a tidal wave to break over the city if she refused. She accepted. Zeus heard the sound of this quarreling and he came down and decreed a truce. Then all the gods sat in council to hear the rival claim. After hearing both Athene and Poseidon, they voted to award the city to Athene because her olive tree was the better gift. After that, Athenians had to be very careful when they went to sea and were often unfortunate in their navy battles. Poseidon was very fond of Demeter and pursued her hotly whenever he thought about it. He cornered her finally one hot afternoon in a mountain pass and demanded that she love him. She didn't know what to do. She was... He was so huge and so implacable and so persistent. Finally, Demeter said, Give me a gift. You have made creatures for the sea. Now make me a land animal, but a beautiful one, the most beautiful ever seen. She thought she was safe because she believed he could make only monsters. She was amazed when he made her a horse and gasped with delight when she saw it. And Poseidon was so struck by his handiwork that he swiftly made a herd of horses that began to gallop about the meadow, tossing their heads, flirting their tails, kicking up their back legs, and neighing joyously. And he was so fascinated by the horses that he forgot all about Demeter and leaped on one and rode off. Later he made another herd of green ones for his undersea stables, but Demeter kept the first herd. From, from that all the horses in the world have descended. Another story says it took Poseidon a full week to make the horse. During that time, he made and cast aside many other creatures that didn't come out right, but he simply threw them away without killing them, and they made their way into the world. From them have come the camel, the hippopotamus, the giraffe, the donkey, and the zebra. In another story, Demeter turned herself into a mare to escape Poseidon, but he immediately changed himself into a stallion, galloped after her and caught her, and from this courtship came a wild horse, Arion, and the nymph named 
Despania. Demeter was also a moon goddess, and all through mythology there is a connection between horse and moon and sea. The she-horse is given a sea name, Mare, and the moon swings the tides and the waves have white manes. The dripping horses stamp on the beach and their hooves leave moon-shaped marks, an old, old thing that has not entirely disappeared. And that is the end of the story of Poseidon.